Resident Evil games have earned their crown as the king of survival horror. Capcom debuted its World of Mutants and Mercenaries in 1996 and has since grown Resident Evil into a multimedia franchise that spans over two dozen console games, six films, two recent Netflix series, novels, comics, and even stage plays. Over time, Capcom has created a grand Resident Evil mythology with a core cast of recurring characters who will encounter the biohazard threats created by the evil Umbrella Corporation time and time again over the course of several decades that span across numerous games. There are 10 core Resident Evil games. Resident Evil 0 through 7, Village, and Code Veronica. However, the total number of Resident Evil console games, including spin offs and remakes, sits around 30. That number rises near 60 when accounting for mobile and pachinko games. For this chronological order, we're focusing on 12 Resident Evil games, all the 10 core entries and the two Revelations spin offs. While many others are considered canon, this is not an exhaustive chronology, but rather an approachable guide to entering and enjoying the world of Resident Evil video games. Missing from this list are mobile and pachinko games, light gun and Wii shooters. This includes Resident Evil Survivor, Survivor 2, Dead Aim, Umbrella Chronicles, and Dark Side Chronicles, as well as non-canonical or difficult to access spin-offs that include Resident Evil Gaiden, Outbreak, Outbreak File Number 2, Mercenaries 3D, Operation Raccoon City, Resistance, Umbrella Corps, and Reverse. Resident Evil Zero is the fifth game released in the series, but the first game to take place chronologically. It's set just before the events of the first Resident Evil, with Special Tactics and Rescue Service, or STARS, medic Rebecca Chambers and former Marine Billy Cohen. While investigating a mysterious train crash, the pair discover that the locomotive is in fact full of zombies. Billy and Rebecca uncover valuable information related to series villains Albert Wesker and William Birkin, and we also learn more about the origins of the sinister Umbrella Corporation and its deadly T-Virus. The game leads directly into the events of Resident Evil 1, with Rebecca headed toward the mansion where she'll serve as a supporting character. Talk about one hell of a night. Jill, run for that house! The first Resident Evil came to PlayStation in 1996, though for those coming to the franchise in 2023, you'll want to play the 2002 remake or its more recent HD remaster, as it improves gameplay and expands on the story. Resident Evil 1 picks up directly after the events of Resident Evil Zero. You play as one of two STARS agents, Chris Redfield or Jill Valentine, who come to the Spencer Mansion while investigating a series of murders in the woodlands outside of Raccoon City. The two protagonists will encounter the murderous, mutated victims of the T-Virus and uncover key information about Umbrella and its biological experimentation. Chris and Jill in the events of the Spencer Mansion will set the stage for the entire series, introducing two of the series' recurring heroes, its main villains, Albert Wesker and Umbrella Corporation, and various cast members who will pop up throughout the Resident Evil timeline. Don't shoot! Get down! <laughs> Set two months after the events of Resident Evil 0 and 1, Resident Evil 2 introduces two new protagonists, rookie cop Leon Kennedy and Chris's sister Claire Redfield, each with their own connected yet distinct campaign. For Leon, it's his first day as a Raccoon City police officer, only for the city to become overrun by zombies. Claire, meanwhile, is looking for her brother, only to get wrapped up in the Dark Umbrella Conspiracy. Resident Evil 2 also introduces recurring characters Ada Wong, Sherry Birkin, and the iconic Tyrant Enemy. We learn more about William Birkin and his work on an even more threatening virus called the G-Virus, while Leon and Claire uncover more disturbing details about the clandestine work of Umbrella, as well as its ties to the Raccoon Police Department. I don't have time to explain. You gotta get out of there right now! All right, let me grab my... The chronology gets dicey with Resident Evil 3, but for the sake of simplicity, we recommend playing it after Resident Evil 2. The first part of Resident Evil 3 takes place before the events of Resident Evil 2, but the second part takes place after. You could play halfway through 3, pause, play through 2, then return for the second half of 3. However, playing Resident Evil 3 after 2 won't detract from the experience or your understanding of the story. We chose to place it fourth on this list, seeing as its conclusion progresses the overall narrative beyond Resident Evil 2. You begin Resident Evil 3 as Jill Valentine, still coping with her experience from Resident Evil 1 and ready to leave Raccoon City behind for good. Resident Evil 3 ends the Raccoon City saga as the city ends up getting blown up at the end to try and contain the zombie outbreak. Her name is Claire Redfield. We caught her trespassing in our Paris Lab facility 10 days ago. 
She apparently infiltrated the complex looking for her lost brother, Chris Redfield. Resident Evil Code Veronica advances the timeline by a couple of months and sees Claire Redfield continue the search for her brother, Chris, that began in Resident Evil 2. This time, Claire's search takes her to an umbrella facility in France, where she escapes captivity alongside an inmate, Steve Burnside, and the pair follow Umbrella's trail to the southernmost region of Earth, Antarctica. Chris Redfield, one of the protagonists from the original game, returns as a second playable character in Code Veronica as the siblings finally reunite at the edge of the world. But the reunion includes another familiar face as well, Albert Wesker. You are a long way from home, cowboy. You have my sympathies. Guess that's a local's way of breaking the ice. Anyway, you know what this is all about. My assignment is to search for the president's missing daughter. What? Resident Evil 4, arguably the series' most beloved entry, puts players back in the shoes of Leon Kennedy six years after his escape from Raccoon City in Resident Evil 2. Leon, now a Secret Service agent for the United States government, travels to a rural village in Spain on a mission to rescue the president's kidnapped daughter. There, Leon encounters a cult experimenting with a mind-controlling parasite. Of course, this being a Resident Evil game, Albert Wesker is revealed to be the true puppet master of the events unfolding in this quiet part of Europe, this time aided by Leon's old friend, Ada Wong. It's been 94 minutes since Chris and Jessica dropped off the radar. But the interpolation from their last known coordinates puts them right here on this ship. Resident Evil Revelations is set between the events of Resident Evil 4 and 5 and explores another consequence of Umbrella's bioweapon development. Revelations introduces players to a new organization, the Bioterrorism Security Assessment Alliance, BSAA, which becomes a key agency in the next mainline Resident Evil game. Jill Valentine and Chris Redfield are now BSAA agents, with Jill serving as the game's primary protagonist. The duo head to the Mediterranean to combat the use of T-Abyss, a new variant of the T-Virus. Freeze! Resident Evil 5 is set five years after Resident Evil 4. Chris Redfield, as part of the BSAA, flies to Africa with his new partner, Sheva Alomar, to prevent the black market sale of a bioweapon. The people of Kajuju, however, have already been infected with an enhanced version of the mind-controlling parasite previously seen in Resident Evil 4. While their mission is to stop the sale of a new bioweapon, Chris also embarks on the more personal mission of finding his long-lost partner, Jill Valentine. And spoiler alert, Albert Wesker is yet again the primary villain of this game. Claire Redfield, you're coming with us. No, there must be some kind of... Resident Evil Revelations 2 is set between Resident Evil 5 and 6 and returns to Claire Redfield for the first time since the events of Code Veronica. The game is split into four episodes, with each episode divided into two parts. A past sequence featuring Claire and Moira Burton, daughter of former Stars member Barry Burton, and a present timeline starring Barry himself, who is attempting to locate the two women. As if one Wesker wasn't enough, Revelations 2 also introduces a new member of the Wesker family, Albert's sister, Alex. What happened to the legendary Chris Redfield, huh? What happened to you? It's a good thing Finn's not around to see you this way. Resident Evil 6 is set three to four years after the events of Resident Evil 5 and brings back many of the game's former protagonists. It weaves together four campaigns starring Leon Kennedy, Chris Redfield, Ada Wong, and a mercenary named Jake Muller. The BSAA introduced in Revelations plays an important role in Resident Evil 6, as the quartet of protagonists work to squash the bioterrorist group Neo Umbrella and prevent the spread of yet another mutant-creating virus, the C-Virus. In a surprise twist, the new Wesker member introduced in Resident Evil 6 is not the villain, but rather the protagonist, Jake Muller, who is actually Albert Wesker's son. Hit boy's got to eat! <laughs> he got to have his supper! <laughs> Come here, boy. <laughs> With Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, Capcom reinvented the franchise in several ways. For the first time, the series introduces a new protagonist in Ethan Winters, and most notably, it switches the series' long-running perspective from third person to first person. Despite all these changes, RE7 still exists on the series' canonical timeline. The series once again time jumps, this time four years after the events of Resident Evil 6 to 2017 in rural Louisiana. The setting, however, is not some elaborate medical facility, but rather the home of the Baker family. While ties to past Resident Evil games are rather loose in this one, many of the series' staples are here. Clandestine human experimentation, bioweapons, and towards the end, a somewhat familiar face in Chris Redfield, who is looking a bit different this time around. Sir. Take him away. I said get your hands off her! Ethan, no. <laughs> Resident Evil Village is a continuation and the conclusion of Ethan Winter's story, set three years after the events of RE7. Biohazard and Village stand on their own as a duology of games. 
Still, Village includes a few more ties to the series' past, including a more prominent role for series mainstay Chris Redfield, and further information about the origins of Umbrella and how the company ties into the events of Resident Evil 7 and Village. A post-credits scene extends the timeline even further, officially taking the series out of our timeline and into the future. Oh my god, Rose is so weird. Yeah, it's like she sees things that aren't there. Creepy. Stay away from us, Ugh, you freak. Imagine wanting to be friends Ugh, with her. Definitely. Ew, not something just moved on her hand. Picking up shortly after Village's post credit scene and 16 years after the main story of Village, Shadows of Rose progresses the Resident Evil timeline further than any game before it. Assuming the events of Village take place in 2021, Shadows of Rose brings the franchise into the near future of 2037. The three to four hour DLC stars Ethan's daughter Rose, who attempts to rid herself of the unwanted powers inherited from her father. Oh my god. Is this what the formula feels like? That is the timeline of all the main Resident Evil games released so far. Be sure to check out IGN's review of the Resident Evil 4 Remake, and for more zombie apocalypse goodness, keep it spooky right here on IGN.